Hello and welcome to the class experiment. I've been seeing a lot of videos, or at least watching a lot of videos lately about our really insanely stupid economic system. You know, the one where everybody works for somebody else. Nothing really seems to make any sense. Nobody's getting paid what they're worth. Yada, yada, yada. <clears throat> I started working, oh God, was it almost 30 years ago? Yeah, I was in high school. Got my first job at the local Meyer. We're making four fifteen an hour. That was minimum wage. So in a week, if I was lucky, I might leave there with a hundred, hundred and twenty dollars, somewhere around there for the week. And if you think about that, that's a high school kid working thirty, between thirty and thirty-eight hours, and walking away with a hundred plus dollars. So yeah, that was where I started out in this really stupid system that we have going on. So I'm seeing a lot of this, uh, you know, people don't want to work anymore. I don't blame them. I, I really don't. Uh, last full-time job I had was, uh, I left that in 2020. Currently, I have two part-time jobs, which together equals about eight hours a day, maybe a little less. My morning job is about four hours. I have the afternoon off. And then in the evening, I go to my other job for somewhere between three to four hours. And then I do it all over again. Now... There's parts about that that suck. It's roughly 20 to 30 minute commute one way uh, to get to both places. <sighs> no, actually, I think it's about less than that. It's like 15, 20 minutes. It's 15, 20 minutes. And one thing I figured out, instead of listening to crappy radio, I started getting old used books on CD and uh, currently I I figured out that I can listen to one CD for an audiobook per day doesn't really make me feel all that bad now with all the driving I feel like I'm kind of multitasking but to uh, get back onto the topic at hand would I like a full-time job? I don't think I could do either job I have now full-time if I wanted to. One thing that pissed me off about my last job is it was eight hours a day. The first, and I'm not kidding, the first five hours of that eight-hour shift was nothing. There was nothing to do. Uh, you roamed around, pretended to dust shelves pick up pieces of trash off the floor clean a window if you hadn't already cleaned it earlier that day or the day before it was a complete fucking waste of time and that was one thing that really pissed me off about it the job the job itself primarily was the last three hours the place would close, and from that point on, we could pull trash, we could vacuum, we could mop floors, use a floor scrubber, uh, all the things you could not do when customers were in the building. That was what our primary job was. But because we were full-time employees, we had to be there for five hours doing absolutely nothing because there was nothing to do. 
But you couldn't be caught doing nothing. You had to make it look like you were doing something to justify the pay, even though they structured this job to just not fucking work. So my current jobs, even though that they're, they're part-time, a lot better. My first job is the exact opposite of what I just described. The first two hours is making sure the building is ready to open. And even after it opens, I'm running around doing all the things I didn't have time to do because in all honesty, I could probably, I could probably do the entire thing in like three hours. But I'm also the maintenance guy now. So if something breaks, if something needs to be painted, if something isn't working correctly if you get the idea like if staff needs me to do something i'm there to do it for like another two hours after i've already been there but cleaning wise three hours i could get a lot more done compared to the two hours that i'm given but uh no it's in that four hours i feel like I'm actually useful. My time isn't being wasted, which is the most important thing, I think. And my second job. I go in, I immediately start working. The purpose of the job is to fill a trailer and make sure it leaves on time with the, the packages I need to go from point A to point B. So I'm working nonstop. Not really any breaks. There's a few things afterwards where it's just kind of like, eh, do I really need to be doing this? But uh, no, between the two jobs, it's not all that bad. Full time, like I said, and, and a good portion of the full time jobs I've had in the past, I don't fucking get it. I really don't. They want you to be efficient. They want you to get things done quicker. And uh, But in the meantime, if they catch you not doing something while not on your break, they want to yell at you because they're like, hey, we, we paid for your time. I'm pretty sure it's still my time. You just haven't found anything for me to do. And I'm not going to go asking you for something to do because you already set the the standards as to what I'm required to do during my shift. And now that I can efficiently do it at a quicker pace with the same quality, you're going to punish me just because you want to keep me on a fucking clock. So yeah, there's also the problem of, so you become more efficient. You're good at your job. Well, two things happen. One, Management starts expecting you to do other people's jobs who are incapable of doing it or just too fucking lazy or just expect other people to do it for them anyways. Sometimes it's a combination of all three. So there you start doing other people's work. And if management expects you to because that's the easiest out for them. You're, you're going to find that with management, they want the easy out. They want to just tell somebody else to do it. Not hear no <laughs> and go about uh, their, their DEI meetings, their, their Zoom meetings, their, uh, <laughs> depending on where you work, I don't know, pharmacy rep, sexual harassment stuff, I don't know. Um, but the funny thing is with management, you, you come to them with something that is their job to handle Nine times out of ten, they don't want to handle it. The other problem with being good at your job. They want to keep you in your job. There's no moving up after that point. If you are efficient in doing what you do, they don't have to worry about you. They can just leave you alone. You're going to do what is expected of you. They're going to keep you there. That was something I learned working at the hospital. They had no interest in promoting anybody who was good at doing their job and they didn't have to worry or think about. It was, oh, they, they want to do what? No. Um, 
just uh, hire so-and-so instead. That also leads to other problems, such as uh, the people that they do move up usually are, how should I put this, problem people? The whole failing up notion, which is real. That is real. If you screw up on a regular basis at your job, a lot of times they will advance you just to fucking get rid of you. So yeah, that asshole that nobody can stand who's sexually harassing people or stealing from the company or is related to so-and-so and doesn't do jack shit, that person will get promoted, they will make more money, they'll move up the ladder. Meanwhile, everybody else who works hard expecting to get ahead because that's what we've been told our entire freaking lives, well, if you work hard, you can get ahead and make more and, and that's, that's the American way. No, no it's not. It's uh, who you know, who you blow, sometimes literally, that will get you ahead. And sometimes just flat out fucking lying. When I worked at the hospital, there was one woman I worked with. She hadn't been there for very long. But uh, a management position came up. Supervisor, manager, or whatever. So she applies to be a supervisor. Well, of course, they want to know what her experience is. I didn't bother <laughs> applying for it because I had done so in the past, but didn't have any experience, wasn't willing to go into debt to go back to school to do a job that I didn't know if I was going to like or not. Anyways, quite frankly, does anybody like their fucking jobs? Probably not. That's somehow become like a requirement of like, well, it's very obvious that you don't like working here, so we're going to let you go. Bitch, you talk to anybody back there, nobody fucking likes working here, and you're getting rid of me? Good luck. No, uh, <laughs> so to get back to this other chick, so she used to work at a prison. Now, what her job was at the prison and what she put down on, uh, her resume were two totally different things because here's the trick. When you interview and HR tries to confirm that you worked at this place, the only thing that they're allowed to ask is, were they employed from this date to this date, blah, blah, blah. Yes or no. So while this girl had worked as a receptionist for people who came to visit prisoners, um, she had put down that she was a prison guard. Of course, our uh, manager at the time was impressed by this and thought like, I need somebody more assertive to get this department going. So yeah, this girl interviews. She makes up a bunch of shit about like, well, I always told the, the prisoners that if they didn't want to get in the cell, that I, you could either go in on your own or you'll go and get this pepper spray. Yeah, and somehow threatening people with pepper spray was like, that's a winner. <laughs> I want to hire this person to motivate my employees. Yeah, uh, didn't turn out well. Uh, she, she did get the job. No surprise there. Oh yeah, she was also one of those DEI, looks good. We've got now a uh, person of color check mark box checked off uh, on the list. So we've got a female person of color. She was a prison, <laughs> says she was a prison guard. Yeah, she, th this department, it's gonna, it's gonna go places. Then she starts hiring all of her fucking family under her. No joke. She had one cousin who lied about what he did during the Iraq war. Was a veteran. Didn't do jack shit. Yeah, uh, he lasted about six months because uh, they caught him. <laughs> He'd come in, clock in at seven, by 8.30, he was leaving the building on camera, 
and then he would miraculously show up again at about 3, 3.30 to clock out for the end of the day. Meanwhile, nobody knew where the hell he was. So, uh, yeah, he ended up getting fired. There's another girl, also her cousin, that was hired that she supervised over. And um, she ended up getting an area that I had worked in. Basically, I was harassed to the point where I was like, Fuck, I will work anywhere else in the hospital if I don't have this bitch as my boss. Then her, her, uh, her cousin takes over that area. And for two years, the staff there was like, why isn't our shit clean? Like, what happened to, uh, what happened to the guy that was here? Like, everything looked fine. What is going on? And those complaints never, never went anywhere. Well then, uh, so supervisor girl gets promoted <laughs> to another department to supervise over somebody else. And then all of a sudden her cousin, who thought that she was all safe and didn't have to do jack shit. Well, the staff in that area, they, they go to the new supervisor and it's like, um, yeah, we've been complaining for like three years that this bitch hasn't done shit. And could you just look around? It's a hospital. Like, what the, f what's going on? Yeah, the new boss, uh, that was like one of the first things he did. I was kind of impressed. He, he was just like, yeah, doors over there. The, uh, the longer version of the, uh, conversation was, uh, he decided he was going to walk through the area with her and tell her what her responsibilities were. And she uh, replied, ain't no white motherfucker going to tell me how to do my goddamn job. And he was like, there's the door. So, uh, yeah. I don't know if that chick still works there. Don't really care. But uh, stuff like that is what ran that place into the ground. So, yeah. <sighs> do I want to work? No, I don't want to fucking work. You know, if I if I could just do YouTube videos like this, that'd be awesome. If uh, <laughs> if I could just work from home, that would be awesome. The whole part time thing sucks. All the driving sucks. You know, I I try to deal with that the best I can. The pay is honestly better than what I was getting living in the big city. Um, the benefits are a hell of a lot better than when I worked at a fucking hospital. How does that work? How is it that me loading a truck at night, I don't have money coming out of my paychecks. Uh, we rarely ever get a bill in the mail. This covers, and it covers my wife, my two kids, me. And, uh, yeah, like I said, rarely ever get a bill. And, um, the hospital, it was insane. It was crazy. And the thing is, they would do these surveys or votes on, like, if you could decide between this insurance and this insurance. Now, this one costs more, but it covers more. And this one does this, but it does this. It's like... Either way, I, I wasn't getting paid enough to even be able to use my insurance. I maxed out. I was there for 14 years. And year 14, it took 14 years to max out on my pay. I started out at like 7 something an hour, probably like 7.15, something like that. I maxed out at 12. It took me 14 years to get up to $12 an hour. And we just consistently had staff that was like, yeah, we'll take the better insurance. But this was like nurses making 40 some dollars an hour. PCAs who are making like $15 an hour if they were lucky. The patient care assistants. And uh, even they were getting kind of pissed because they're like, we already can't afford the insurance that we have. And these assholes who make more than double what we do are like, yeah, I could afford that. <laughs> so, and of course, everybody was required to have the same insurance. So, yeah, the, 
the 10 to 12 dollar an hour people were paying the same amount for insurance as the 40 an hour dollar an hour people but we weren't allowed to bitch about it because i'm like well it all costs the same no no it doesn't <laughs> What is 5 to 10% of your paycheck is 25% of my paycheck. What about that don't you understand? So yeah. Anyways. <sighs> That's all I've got for today. Keep on typing.